Okay, so in this video, we're going to be chatting a little bit about the baroreceptor reflex. So when we think of the word baro, baro means pressure, right? So baro means pressure. So this is going to be a pressure receptor. So it's a pressure that's receptor is going to be responsive to various changes in pressure. And we'll see that it's located in what is known as the carotid sinus and the aortic arch. Now, there's a reason for this is because the aortic arch is right where the um, obviously, we you know the aortic arch is just after the aorta, and this is strategic because that's all the blood that is entering the systemic circulation has to pass through that point. So it's a very strategic position to have your pressure uh, sensor because all the blood is passing through there, and it gives you an idea of your your mean arterial pressure, the fact that um, it's placed over there, and also because blood flow to the brain is particularly important. That's why you have this carotid sinus. So you can see it's it's. It's very much strategically placed. And remember the pressure receptors, they are stretch receptors. So an increase in pressure will stimulate these, um, these receptors. And ultimately what's going to happen is that, and this is what's the cool thing about this baroreceptor reflex, is that when you have an increased blood pressure, remember the whole idea is that you want to keep homeostasis. So when you increase your, your blood pressure, which means that you're going to increase the stretch, it's going to send action potential signals to the cardiovascular control center. The cardiovascular control center is going to cause an autonomic feedback response, which is going to favor the parasympathetic over the sympathetic response. Why? Remember, parasympathetic is what slows down the heart rate. And if you slow down the heart rate, your blood pressure is going to drop. So that's the thinking behind this, because if you have an increased stretch, the implication is that your pressure is increasing. So you're going to try and find a way to decrease the pressure by sending it to the um, cardiovascular control center, which causes autonomic response, which favors parasympathetic over sympathetic, which would ultimately decrease the heart rate, therefore decreasing the blood pressure. The same thing if you had a decrease in pressure, um, you would... Um, still send signals to the cardiovascular control center, but then you would favor sympathetic to speed up the heart rate because your blood pressure has dropped. So you speed up the heart rate, so you increase the blood pressure. So what I'm trying to outline about this is that we now have a relationship between blood pressure and your heart rate. We said that if your blood pressure increases, you favor the sympathy or parasympathetic nervous system, which will ultimately decrease the heart rate. So there's a relationship now as our blood pressure increases, according to the baroreceptor reflex, our heart rate will decrease. So as our BP increases, our heart rate decreases. And I'm going to show you an example of that when we look at the next slide. So this slide is called uh, an, an extension of the baroreceptor reflex. And it's basically something which is known as the Valsalva maneuver which is basically when you expire against a closed glottis, so you don't allow air to leave for 15 seconds. So it's almost like you're trying to breathe out, but you're stopping the air from leaving. And you're using all your expiratory muscles to try and force air out, but you're blocking it by, by virtue of the glottis. And, and what they're trying to do is explore, explore the relationship between what happens with blood pressure over time, as well as heart rate over time. The first thing that I want to show you, and this is where the baroreceptor reflex comes in, and I, see, and, I, and I spoke about how, and this is actually where it gets really cool. Remember we said as blood pressure increases, what happens to our heart rate? It decreases, right? What happens when we increase blood pressure here? Heart rate decreases. Blood pressure decreases, heart rate increases. So you see there's almost like a mirror relationship. The blood pressure increases, heart rate decreases. This decreases, this increases. This increases, this decreases. So there's an inverse relationship. And that's exactly what we spoke about in the previous slide when it came to the baroreceptor reflex, right? So this, now that we understand the baroreceptor reflex, we can explain why the heart rate is decreasing and increasing and decreasing and increasing because we know the relationship between blood pressure and heart rate. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay. But now why is the blood pressure like this? Okay, so it's basically a staged sequence of events that causes this, right? So let's try and mimic what's happening here, right? And let me just, let me bring out 
some of the... Let me bring out our old friend over here, okay? So this guy is trying to breathe out. But he's closing his glottis. But remember, he's using all of his expiratory muscles. Okay, he's using all of his expiratory muscles, trying to force air out. But air is not going out because he's closing his glottis. He's closing his glottis. 15 seconds. So if you're using all of your expiratory muscles and you're closing your glottis, what is the pressure going to be inside of your thorax? It's going to increase, right? It's going to increase. And that's what we call a pulmonary squeeze. Because you're squeezing the blood vessels, you're squeezing the organs, you're increasing the pressure inside of the organs, in the, the, you, you're sort of compressing the blood vessels. So if you're compressing the blood vessels, what's going to happen to the blood pressure? It's going to increase, right? And that's why the blood pressure increases. And of course, the baroreceptor reflex, the heart rate will decrease. Then we see a decrease in blood pressure. And why is that? Now, remember I said the pressure inside of the thorax is going to be markedly increased because you're stopping air from leaving, right? That also means that air or the pressure not only is it's not only compressing the blood vessels, it's also increasing inside of the various organs, like the heart, like the lungs. So that means that the pressure inside of your heart is going to increase, especially with regards to the right atrium, because you're just forcing this air, air is, the, the pressure inside of your thorax is increasing, so the pressure in your organs is going to decrease. So that means that the pressure inside of your right atrium is going to increase. So if the pressure inside of your right atrium is going to increase, what is that going to do to the venous return? It's going to decrease it. Because uh, largely venous return depends on the pressure gradient. So if you increase the pressure inside of the right atrium, it's going to hamper um, that venous return process. And if you decrease venous return, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? Well, if you decrease venous return, you decrease your preload. If you decrease your preload, you can't pump out as much, which means that your blood pressure will decrease, which explains why the blood pressure decreases over here. Okay. Then we see an increase in blood pressure. Now, why is that? Now, obviously, if your blood pressure is decreasing dramatically, as we see over here, what's going to happen? Your sympathetic nervous system is going to act on the blood vessels, and it's going to cause vasoconstriction, because if you cause vasoconstriction, that's going to increase blood pressure. Because remember, you're trying to get the blood pressure back to normal. So you see a very sympathetic vasoconstriction to get that blood pressure back to normal. So this is all in the period when the person has got a closed glottis. But eventually, after 15 seconds, the patient starts breathing again. Which means that air can now leave the glottis and be expelled into the atmosphere. Then, what happens to the pressure inside of the thorax? If air is leaving, it's going to ultimately decrease. If you decrease the pressure inside the, the thorax, there's not going to be like a, as massive a compression of your blood vessels. In other words, because air is leaving, you're not going to be compressing your blood vessels as much. So if you're not compressing your blood vessels as much, you're sort of going to... like. It's going to mimic a dilation of the blood vessels, which is ultimately going to decrease the pressure inside of the blood vessels because of the air leaving. But remember what we said, if the pressure in the thorax decreases, that means that the pressure in the organs is also going to decrease. So that means that in our heart, the pressure in the right atrium isn't going to be as high anymore. So that means that your venous return is going to start increasing again. Remember, your air is leaving you if you've, you've exhaled properly now. The, the pressure inside of your, your right atrium is now going to be much lower than what it was, which means that venous return can increase. If venous return increases, preload increases. If preload increases, contractility increases, which means that your amount of blood coming out of your in, in your contraction increases, which, mean that, which means that your blood pressure is going to increase. But remember, your blood pressure is increasing not only because blood, blood, more blood is being pumped out, it's also increasing because, remember, your blood vessels are already sympathetically vasoconstricted. 
So that's why they say it's going to overshoot because your Venus return returns and you're still vasoconstricted. And then eventually your vasoconstriction wears off and then your blood pressure returns back to normal. So this is basically the Valsalva -Sal maneuver. And I just hope that it makes more sense. Um, it's quite cool how everything fits together. But what I found absolutely amazing is how the blood pressure, the relationship between blood pressure and heart rate is is inversely. And just by looking at these graphs, you can sort of see it's like a mirror. I mean, if you turn it over like this, you can see it's almost like a mirror. If you draw a line down like this, you can see it's almost like a mirror reflection. And I find that absolutely amazing. So yeah.